had a really difficult time drawing since I was a kid, so I always wanted to be able to render these images that were in my mind, and uh, the drawing machine was a way for me to collaborate with the machine um, to create these works. It plays with a different way of producing work, where we don't have to rely on our own physical bodies to produce art. We can extend our system beyond our own hands. When I started deciding to be an artist, it started melding a bunch of different interests together. Eventually, the fabrication process converged with programming and into a new form that I got really excited about where the programming could augment the physical world and make something move in an interesting and creative way. This is where it all started. It's a very simple mechanism. It just uses two motors and a little servo to pick the pen off the page. And it's driven by an Arduino that tells it how to move to that spot. And then an algorithm written in processing that actually decides how to draw and picks where and, and what movement it's going to make and what gesture it's going to draw with. It was a new form of art that I could express myself in through the tool, through the drawing machine itself. So I would keep creating new algorithms and new processes for it to create different and unique works of art. For the drawing machine that I'm running now, it's grabbing images from Google Earth and it's pulling satellite imagery and drawing it at random. So it doesn't actually know where this place is, but it's creating a map, um, an impossible map. And I think that loss of communication and that failure for a machine to communicate properly is what I find exciting and the, the randomness in which it produces these results. I created a way for the drawing machine to produce work completely unaided by humans. And the way I did that was I put a cricket in a box and I had a camera track the location of that cricket around space. And as that cricket moved, it would draw in real time on the wall. So unknowingly, the cricket was the artist creating the drawing over time. But that was a complete lack of control on my part. Um, I produced the system for it to, to create the work and then I let the bug roam wild. And I find that the authority and, and who is the artist, the collaboration between the cricket and the machine, and then me as the producer of the experience, is all a really interesting concept of who is really making the work. It's a, a happy collaboration between me and the machine. I create the rules and the systems that it follows and then I let it go. So I don't do any interaction with the machine once it's started. I let it do whatever it wants to. And when I show this machine, it's a performance. It's the machine performing and generating the work. And that, to me, is the art. When we see something that moves, we always relate it to something organic, something alive, and something tangible. And there's that weird middle ground where you know that it's a robot and you know that it doesn't have a thought, but the way that it produces the works makes you think about how we make work and how we create drawings. So there's always that consideration of how we experience the world as humans and then how a machine can interpret that and fail to do so or do so incorrectly or actually reveal things about the world that we might not think of. The interpretation about persistence was with memory and forgetting. The wall is covered in glow-in-the-dark paint and as the arm swings around like a clock, it produces an image on the wall. The minute you recognize what's happening, it disappears. So there's a play with our own memory and the futility of trying to remember something very clearly in the way that it passes over time. I think a lot of my video work harps on that a little further of, of how time can be non-linear. As humans, we see from the past to the present to the future one line that moves through that time. But with a computer system and, and software, we're just representing that. If you were to dismantle that sequence, there's a new understanding of each moment. 
The bus piece I did was tracking buses as they moved down. And there's one tour bus in Chicago that would take the same turn at this one corner. And I stood there and, and photographed every single one and then spliced each frame to match up. And the moment and the gesture of its movement was played out by a multitude of different buses making a turn. The way that we live in the moment, um, it's hard for us to notice these gradual progressions of things. And my work is meant to bring that timeline into something that we can comprehend, that we can look at and, and see the depth of it. So I use technologies and, and might hack them or reinterpret them or reuse them from other devices to create things that I've never seen before and produce works that could never have been made another way. <laughs>